everyone welcome to my channel it's Kim here and today is my Sunday tutorial and so today I'm going to show you how I dissect um, these books that have photo images in them to create um, ephemera for for uh, my journals now I've had some of you say that uh, you haven't worked with photos or you don't or you're not interested in working with photos out of books uh, but there are some fun ways and easy ways to create some uh, super ephemera and for next to nothing. Um, uh, if you follow my uh, thrift shop hauls, I picked these books up uh, recently and I think I paid 50 cents a piece for each of these. And this one had a funny story in itself in that I had found this book in Winnipeg and my girlfriend in Winnipeg uh, really wanted it. So I gave it to her because I didn't want to have to ship it back anyway. It's pretty heavy. Um, so I was a little bit sad, but I have so many books that it wasn't that sad, but this book, I found it again here in New Brunswick and it has over 200 pre-cut floral tags. Uh, well, I'm calling them floral tags. Um, but there's over 200 pictures here. that are just gorgeous, uh, for using in your art. Now this book, uh, is coil, uh, bound with, uh, one of these coils that you would, you would use maybe your zutter machine if you have a zutter or a cinch machine. And in my last video, I talked about how you could take your machine to open this up. Well, I made a mistake there. You, you can't use, and I have both. I have the cinch and the zutter. You can't use them to open up the coil. Um, there's a method to hold the coil and fill it. And then there's also a method to close the coil. Uh, but you're pretty much on your own to open it up. So with this book, I had torn off um, this first side uh, when I was doing the video to show you how it was um, uh, put in this book with a coil. And at this end, it's still uh, intact. And my thought was to uh, tear this off, but uh, I, like, I like this page, so I'm going to save it. So I'm just going to work really quickly from this side and open these up. So I've, I've just got a pair of pliers here. And I'm just opening them up enough. You don't want to put too much pressure on them because you want to be able to reuse this um, coil binding. So this also shows you that you can you can use these coils probably without the machine too. Although you you would get a much nicer um, closure with the machine, um, more even. But it isn't that hard to to uh, open them up. And the reason I do this is because these bindings cost about, um, I would say no less than a dollar each in the United States, uh, unless you can find them on sale or use your Michael's coupon or one of your other coupons. But most of the time they're about a dollar to a dollar fifty each, depending on the size. And if you get one free with every book, um, that you buy for 50 cents and you're using the book, that's a bonus and a win-win because these coils can be cut up into pieces as well. So you don't have to use the whole binding for making a book. You can use just have three or four in the center, depending on the size of your book and, and get way more mileage out of this piece of, of um, binding. So as you can see, it hasn't taken me much to open this up. And just a little bit of chit chat and you can get it going. There we are. So now because I have to take everything off from this side, we'll start first by taking this big book out of here, the cover. It might be painful, but it's not that long. Um, so there's the cover, and I am able to salvage this page, which I can use in, in this cover if I decide to use it for something. I can also cut this cover in half and make it into, um, you know, maybe a collage board that I use for something uh, for myself or um, uh, reuse for, for doing another journal. It's pretty heavy, so it may uh, take some work to cut it. Um, but if you if you cut it at the at the edge of the 
of the back, um, you, you have, you're left with two really nice boards that you can use for other things. Maybe you can, um, if, if you have the right tools, you can slice it and make uh, writing boards for inside your journals as well. So I will keep this cover and, and use it for something. Now I cannot show you my whole desk. My desk is a mess because I, as you know, I've got that uh, work in progress project going on. So I may show you my, my desk uh, before this video is over. Okay, I've turned this around and I'm just going to slowly pull the pages off because you have to go from the side that has this little smaller end. That's how they were fed onto the book or onto the binding. And no, I'm not going to speed this up. I don't know how to do that. And you're just going to have to suffer and watch me do this. I'm one of those people who's going to make noise in my videos. I'm going to slice with my cutter and make noise. Oh, there's my dog making noise. Uh, we're, we're getting renovations done in the basement. They were supposed to be done by now, but they haven't been done yet. So my dog's bed has moved upstairs in preparation for when the um, contractors get here to finish the basement. And so he's sleeping on a just a dog blanket bed, um, just like a, a cushion, which is very inviting to the cats. So every once in a while, the cats will come and try to sleep on it, and he's very possessive of it and, and gets a little annoyed with them. He would never hurt them, of course, but he just lets them know that that's his bed. Um, so you may hear him a few times in the in this video. I'm just going to pull off a few of these tags. We don't need that many. But again, this is just to show you that um, you can re reuse this. I could probably close it up again if I want to keep them all on there, but it's a little bit wonky now that I've taken the cover off. So later on, when you're not around to watch me do this, I will, I will um, take them all off of the book. Now you can also, um, even though I've got the tags there, there are some full-size pieces here that open up that uh, can be cut into tags or envelopes and I'm going to show you how to do some envelopes as well. Um, I'm not going to do those today but but everything in this book will be used. I, I don't waste anything when I take apart a book. And even these little, little coil ends, because I did cut one uh, the other day, uh, but I save those and I, and I stain them and and use them for decoration in my book or for um, a little strip like a like a washi a full washi strip uh, look at this beautiful picture isn't that gorgeous that'll get fussy cut out as well I think oh now I'm torn um, do I use that or do I use this maybe this and then just keep that little piece because that's kind of plain we'll see anyway I'm going to move on from that Everything is teetering on my desk here. I think I have to put it on the floor. <laughs> so then this was the other book. And the same thing, I would just uh, cut the, the um, end paper here so that I would still have this end piece because that's a pretty pretty uh, page, although it's pink, not my color, but uh, it might go in that pink journal I'm working on. Um, so so I, would, I would trim it from both sides to take the pages out, but I had uh, pulled one signature out of here just to get started. And the biggest problem with a book like this is deciding which image to use. Um, because I have this beautiful image on this side, and then I have three on this side. So do I make three smaller tags, or um, do I make a pocket with them? Or do I use this big one and make a giant tag? And I've decided that um, as I pull the pages out uh, to work with this, I'm not going to pull any more out today, I will match them up with something I'm going to use on it. So for these ones, I kind of went ahead and got a little bit ready. And so this butterfly um, seems to match nicely with this. And there was nothing really to worry about on the other side. And then same with this butterfly was a nice match to these flowers. Um, so I'm going to use that one. And this one, you know, I didn't really have anything that I wanted to put with this cactus or that cactus flower. So I looked at this side and I decided just a cream colored butterfly would go very nicely with it. 
And same with this one. I chose a cream one to go with this image and left the picture behind on that one. And then this one was, isn't that just gorgeous? Um, this, this butterfly with, with that image, just beautiful. I'm going to have to watch where I'm, uh, I think my, uh, my camera got moved here. And then it was a choice between these two images or this big one. And so I, I chose this fun bird, uh, to put on here. Great picture. And then this little one, oh, was going this way. And I chose that butterfly to go with it. So I hope you can see that. So those I'm going to do after, but the same process went for, for doing these. So I'm just going to pick, um, a few that I like, like I like this red one and maybe this yellow one is very pretty and this white one. Um, I think I'll just start with the three of those for now. Although this is really cute too. Very neutral looking. Or this one. I think I like this one better than this one. Okay. So my, my uh, first uh, approach to this is, do I want to keep that, that um, hole punched edge? And, and I kind of like it. That just makes the top of the tag right there. Um, so I'm going to uh, decide that, yes, I want to keep those, but you could trim them off, um, and, and use it for something else. Oh, I just saw another one that I really liked. Um, so I could trim it off right there and keep that piece, um, to use in, in another project. Uh, I love the little holes in it. And then just trim down my corners. Uh, to make the tag shape. Now, if you're concerned about your, your, um, tags, you can always just trim off one and then flip it over and cut out the other one, uh, to make your tag shape. And then of course, uh, a hole punch up at the top. So I could leave it like this, uh, decorate or, or uh, put some journal paper on the back, whether it's lined paper or coffee stain paper, and it's already a tag. I don't have to do anything else. Ta-da! Done. Um, but if you want to get fancy, and you really don't need much to make it fancy, you can add things like some book page and music sheet. And uh, so we're just going to do a quick play. And I have um, several types of paper here, so I'm going to use one from a music book. and one from a dictionary. So it really doesn't matter what type of paper you use. And the reason I'm adding the dictionary page, I mean, it could be anything that you add on top. Uh, you could use some, some cardstock. You could use some complimentary scrapbook papers. It's just that I have the book pages and you know, I like to work with book pages and use them up. So I'm just tearing off the, the plain edge. I said plain edge, and this piece of paper has the word plain written right on it. Huh. Was that, um, did I see that without even realizing it, or did it just happen like that? I hope you're, I mean, camera here. So I just tore off the rough edges, but now I'm just going to add a piece of paper. Onto my, um, tag. I don't know if I like the lines, so I think I'll take the lines off of here. I took away the plane. That's so weird. I said that. And then it's a matter of, uh, do I want to put a bird, a butterfly? Um, I decided butterflies and birds both. So I had fussy cut a bunch of them over the last couple evenings to add into my book. And no, I won't painfully make you watch me cut out more, but um, this one will look 
nice in here, kind of, kind of um, camouflaged a little bit with the flowers. And then I have this pretty pink one here. Maybe a red one would look nicer. Mm, I'm liking this back. And then I have this, oh, look at this. Now, I did not plan this, but I have this yellowy pink one here. If you can see. Can you even see the birds that I'm showing you? Yeah, I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. There, that's a little bit better. So now you can see my bird, and you can see this one here. But he needs some kind of paper behind him. So I'm going to take the... Um, the uh, book page and what a difference that makes just uh, giving him a little bit of a background not much just a little bit and then I'm going to add a label. Now, you can add a label. You can add some, some collage-y bits. Maybe you have a couple of snippets handy. And I don't often... I, I mean, I do once in a while print labels, actual labels. But when you have a, a box full of strips of paper, there's plenty of things to make labels with. And if you watch my, my video on organizing your strips, there's a number of ways that I can, I can make a label for this. And let's see, I've got a pretty green one here. And what can I use if it's kind of in the red? So oh, something might be down here at the bottom. No, I'm not going to go as far as organizing my strips by color. Although I could. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to use the same green one again. I think that's really nice. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be a... Maybe I can use this one instead. It doesn't have to be. It could just be a, a nice piece of printed script. And then using some kind of a background, which, again, it's entirely up to you, but I, I like to frame these a little bit and make double labels. No measuring, and I don't care if it comes out a little bit crooked. And then I take the nubs off of these. Nubs, what does that actually even mean, right? Can you see me taking these off? I just snipped the corners a little bit. That's because of Rachel from Roxy Creations. I watched her do that. Although I've been I've been doing labels forever, but she does that on her tags and on her journal cards. Uh, I don't think she calls them nubs though. But so there, I have a tag ready for my my um or I have a label ready for my my tag. And the same with this one. And these are all my scrappy bits that I've taken off of other projects. And I will keep all those because I may want a smaller label on something else. And I'm just going to add that there. So pieces like this I also use for um, making notebooks. And again, just snipping the corners. 
on each one. It just gives it a little bit more finished look. And I'm not sure where that's going to go just yet. We'll see. I hadn't snipped the corners on this one. And I might ink the edges. Um, I won't go through inking all of these things, but if you look at my 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 ink pad here, it is cut off. And that's because I find so many times that I use the ends of these ink pads on one side or the other, and then they become really ratty looking. And I just peel it off and I cut off the end and, and then I, I can move this over to the other side when I've made that one a little too ratty. So it just gives me a little bit more mileage on my ink pad. And I don't normally waste very much. Um, I use these ink pads right to the last sliver. Because when you do a lot of this inking, it's very easy to rat up the edges. And then it becomes um, where you've got crumbs on your table from, from it, uh, doing your inking. And then as I go along, I'm thinking about what I'm going to add to it as well, just for a last minute finishing touch. Now in the video of um, me showing you the, the strip process that I do, uh, I mentioned to you that I often take thin little strips like this and I save them for stitching onto. So I will stitch little pieces of fabric and I do this just to clear it off my desk, get it out of my way, but then I also have them ready to put onto a project. And the reason I do the paperback is so that I can just glue this onto a project and know that it's going to stay on there. I don't have to get out my sewing machine every single time to glue on a ruffle. If I'm doing a ruffle on the side of a journal page, then of course I wouldn't do this process. Well, not necessarily. Um, I would just sew the ruffle without anything inside of like on the, on the bottom. But for, for doing this, I can now take this piece of ruffle that matches pretty nicely and uh, cut it to size. And this can be glued down at the bottom of my tag. So now let's do a little bit of rearranging on here because um, we do want to show off the tag a bit and the flowers. And so then this might go up here. Um, I'm thinking that I might put it down here. He can kind of sit on top of the um, label a little bit. And all of this will get glued down to the, the tag itself. Same with this one. It just so happened that I had, I did not plan this at all, but I had this beautiful red and green one, which will look really nice along the edge of this, this tag here. So I'm just going to trim that off and we are good to go. He too can sit on the uh, label a little bit. I really like the flowers showing off a little bit at the top. So I think I'll just leave them at the top. Now this one has a little bit of white inside here and I could take my scissors and trim it off, but it's also just as easy to, to, um, I'm just using the back side of my book page here to just ink it up a little bit. And it gives you a little bit more st stability and you're not trying to, to, uh, glue those two little legs, those skinny little legs onto your project. So he too could sit on top of the label and can I be lucky three times in a row and have a matching piece to go with him? Perhaps I can because I have this. It's a little bit oranger than the rest of this, but I think it looks cute. I think with choosing these kinds of flowers, it really doesn't matter which, um, 
which uh, ruffles because they they all have some kind of coloring in them that would match the the flowers so i think uh it was just just easy to happen this way so now all i have to do is glue these down and they are ready to go and i'll just show you with uh, a few others that i had made um before so this one is is done and just has a hole at the top these ones i just i just cut off the edge and just um, made holes in them and this one I used a piece of scrapbook paper behind because of the pink butterfly. I wanted to introduce just a little bit more pink in here. So I used the uh, scrapbook paper behind kind of like a washi tape. And then I used the same uh, paper inside my label uh, to complement the pink butterfly. And this little number 153, I think I, I showed you before, is the corner on pages. Um... From book pages, I keep all those numbers. I tear them off right off the the hop from from doing my taking dissecting a book, and so I keep those in a little box and use them whenever I want to number. So there's my number one fifty three. So I'm not going to bore you with gluing these uh, down. Uh, it's just uh, glue stick and a little bit of uh, liquid glue for the ruffle uh, because of the. Um, the thickness I would want a little bit more of a stable glue so that's how I make these tags uh, as for the back uh, some of them are white on the back uh, because of the page that I was working on but others I just glued a piece of coffee stained paper uh, right onto the back just using like this and um, and that's enough to to give you something to write on and you can use loose leaf paper you can use notepad paper um, you can use just plain paper. You, if they're, they're white on the back, you can leave them, but you can also use some of your scrapbook paper. So there's lots of ways to back these and give them both a nice surface to work on, to, to write on, as well as a nice clean finished look on your tags. Um, I may add some ribbons or trims to go in them. I just don't have anything on my table right now, but, uh, whatever it is that I want to use, I will use, and I will save that for when I'm actually putting these into a journal. Uh, because sometimes, you know, maybe the focus here looks like it's more on the pink, but, you know, I may be putting into a journal where the focus is more on the green um, or some of the reds. So I, I wait until I'm actually going to use uh, these items in my journals before I make that decision. And this one, I didn't put anything on the bottom because uh, I really like the yellow flowers. It brought out the yellow bird. And again, it doesn't mean you have to put something on or, or decorate each time. Um, but this was just my personal choice and preference in the case where the bird was too big for the, um, tag. I just wrapped his little tail around the, the other side of the tag to not have to cut him off. And in this case, it was just the butterflies. So that's how I make these tags using photos out of a book. And they can be cut into any size. They can be cut into journal card size and, and work with a rectangular shape. Or you can make short stubby tags. Um, you could use smaller birds, smaller butterflies. You can use people. Um, you could other use other floral images to make a focal point. Um, so it's entirely up to you. But this just gives you an idea. So then I'm going to show you how I used that other book where the pictures were larger. This is why I have so much stuff on my desk because I'm not finishing anything. But after I'm, the video, I will finish these. Now, these bird images, in case you were wondering, uh, I got a really beautiful collection from Caroline's Craft Tree, Caroline Jensen. And uh, this kit comes with uh, uh, six or seven pages, I think, of birds. Uh, they come full size to fill the whole page, but I reduced them uh, down to 75% uh, because I wanted them to fit on my tags. But yeah, a nice collection. And then I did have some that I I had fussy cut earlier and wasn't sure what I was going to use. So so I uh, ended up getting the kit from Caroline and they're just beautiful. And, and uh, I, as you can see, I printed lots of birds. So, so there's going to be some heavy duty work here ahead of me. And um, this one here was 75% and then that's the full size. So it gives you an idea of um, how, how big and how beautiful these birds are. The detail is pretty incredible. Thank you, Caroline. I'm really enjoying these. But as you can see, I have a ton to cut out. 
So now I'm going to go on to the other tags here, or the other uh, images that I had already cut out of this other book. And these were not in perfect tag shape. They, they come in all sizes and, and full size. So I decided these are all going to be for envelopes or possibly journal cards. But I think today I'll show you envelopes um, because journal card is just like making a tag anyway. So if I just have a second here to regroup and find my paper, here it is. I have a combination of tea stained, I have some coffee stained paper, and I have some sheets cut out, out, of, out of a large book. And I think that's what I'll use for making my very large bird tag that I had there. So we'll start with him and then I think I'll do the butterfly one next because that is so pretty. And I have a my um, big journal project that I think I would love to add these into. So let's get this out of the way. Now the first thing I decide is how big of a tag or a journal card or an envelope I want to make. And this is quite a large piece. Um, it's not that wide. It's, it's four and a half, four and mm, sort of four and three eighths wide. Yeah, about that. And, and then it's, it's eight and a half inches long. So it's pretty long, uh, especially once I add a, a the uh, envelope part of it to it. So I'm going to trim this down and there's a lot of green space here. So I'm going to trim this down a little bit. And it's it, because it's only four and a little bit, uh, I'm not worried about it fitting into a journal width wise because most of my journals are five and a half inches wide page is five and a half inches wide. So I think I'll, I'll leave it at this width. So the only thing I do is I put a little bit of glue along the bottom edge okay Kim get your glue ready before you start doing your tutorial sorry that it's taking so long here but it's got a lot of air in here there we go Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit of glue along the bottom. And the reason for that is if I had put glue on all three sides of this envelope, it's going to be a coin envelope, then um, that limits the size, gets smaller and smaller from the edge of the page. And you'll know what I mean shortly. So I just put glue on the bottom and I use enough of the book page to frame the image. Now I frame it at about a half an inch along the bottom. And in this case, probably mm, not quite, maybe about three eighths of an inch along the side there because I'm looking at this thing and I want to cover that border. So I've got it now glued to the page just very, ever so slightly. And I'm going to create that frame on this side of the image because I've done it on that side. So the image is sitting here, but it's framed now on three sides, approximately the same. And it's only because I was concerned of this. Now I may have made myself a little bit short up at the top here, but we can cover that up. So I'm not too concerned. And then I'm just going to take it right to the end of the page. At the top here, I'm going to leave enough to make the flap that comes over. So about an inch and a half right now. And there I just followed along the uh, text. Let's get that out of the way. And I now take this paper, this frame, and I fold it over on both sides of the image. And you can use your bone folder tool to um, smooth it out even better. There 
just of course because you're watching mine's a little bit wonky but that's okay I like wonky I like wonky and I like willy-nilly right Caroline now this one came up just a little bit shy <laughs> on the edge of my frame there so note to self I always say uh, cut then measure, then say oops and cut again. But in this case, I'm just going to deal with it and leave it. So I've made, I've folded it on both sides. Now where the top is, I'm just going to make a little snip here. And same with on this side, I'm just going to make a little snip here so that this part doesn't get folded in. And then same with, well now I've already glued it down I think I've caught it here on the glue. Here we go. Same with on the bottom. I'm just going to make a little snip there and a little snip there. So now this can freely fold over, but we know that this uh, has the right measurements and it's the same width as, as the uh, base of the or the bottom of the envelope. And then I take my scissors and on an angle, I just cut this away. at the bottom and then I open this up at the top and ever so slightly on an angle I cut to that corner and again to that corner and if you like to you can round corner your edges here and then I take my glue And I glue from the outside of the envelope, not on the inside. Missed a little spot there. And then I do the same on this side getting rid of all my little bits here. And then I fold up the bottom. And glue up the bottom flap. And I now have an envelope that is ready to go. When we glued the bottom, it's the only thing where this paper is glued to the bottom. If we would have glued the sides down, then this envelope probably wouldn't have opened up fully. Um, because the sides would have been glued down a little bit. But this way you're getting the whole width of the photograph on the inside and you've just got this little bit of paper on the outside that can easily be decorated. Now I have this white uh, flap on the top and I want to be able to make a little uh, thumb hole at the top. And um, so I because it's, it's uh, paper and when you make one of those thumb holes, there's that little catchy corner edge. I always worry about the envelope tearing, especially if you're putting things in and out of the envelope. So I like to make a little um, paper edge that I put around the top. And this one looks like it would be big enough. Today I am struggling to find my stuff on this table. Okay, well, we'll just use the scissors this time. See, even this paper is tearing on me. And I will put a little bit of glue
and slide it inside. So the glue was facing up. So what I've done is I've glued it to the back side of this paper and I'm just going to roughly tear away this edge. I could have done it before, but that would be make things easy, wouldn't it? And, um, give it a little pinch fold there. And glue this down. Now I like the rough edge showing and this pretty much eliminates that little bit of paper that I had showing through here just by doing this flap and that has given it it's now three uh, widths of paper thick so now when you're sticking your hand in the envelope you know you're not going to tear it so easily and then I just make a little little tab in there to show where that there's going to be something in it and it's good to go. Um, if you're an inker, uh, you can ink the edges a little bit. Ooh, we're really getting into some heavy duty time here. So I'm going to stop this video and then I will restart it um, in part two, but I'll be right back. And I'm back. Did you miss me? Probably not. Okay, so I'm just finishing to ink up the edges on this. And um, then get ready to start decorating. So that just gives it a little bit more depth. And a little bit more distress. Look, I see that there's one piece there still sticking up. So I'm going to get my glue underneath there. And glue it down. Okay, so where did my bird go? There he is. Now again, he gets lost in this in this page because he the color is such a good match. So I'm going to put a little bit of book page behind him, and I think this time I'll use a little bit of music sheet. And Comes from 1921. I don't think I want too too much. See, even that's too much. I just want enough to frame him a little bit so that you can see that. There is a bird there. I think I like that, but I think I'm torn between, yeah, there. I think I'll put them like that. And the same thing, if you want to add a label, it's easy enough to just pick a piece of paper that matches nicely. I still have some of this orange and here's some of that um, edging. I think I was telling you earlier that would look nice on as washi tape on something else. When you're making things like this on the fly, you don't really... Um, know how it's going to turn out. I think I like this plain cardstock. And just cutting the corners on all of these. 
and I have a label to put on here too. So I could go as far as adding some, some of this same, isn't this pretty and, and perfect? Uh, I could add some of this on the bottom as well uh, to create my envelope, but it this is a little bit bulky when I'm going to use this as a floating pocket in a journal with something in it. So I'm, I may tr uh, try to find something that's a little flatter looking. Um, you know, it could be something simple like adding a piece of this ribbon and maybe still a piece of this trim. I'm working in these colors uh, right now with my journals that I'm making. So there's lots of this stuff on the table. Um, but that's a possibility, although I do, I do really like this ruffle. So I don't know, I'll have to think on this one and to decide where I want to use it. To do the finishing for this, all I have to do is ink up a little bit on the bird. Um, so he's not, doesn't have so much of that white showing. And again, there's a lot of white in here because sometimes when you're fussy cutting, it's hard to get in all these little corners and get rid of that white. I just take my ink without inking it any further because there's always ink on it. And I just gently uh, rub on it to get rid of any of those little extra white bits that might be showing. So, so this tones it down a little bit so it's not so choppy looking if if you haven't got into the corners that much like around the the uh, base where his feet are in this case I actually did cut out his feet and then there was a little bit in his ruffle of his feathers here so but I want to keep the bird part white because I think he is mostly white but at least to cover up some of those rough edges and the white where it's you're trying to decide is it part of the bird or is it just bad cutting? Um, so that is the way that I, I uh, catch those edges. And um, yeah, I think he's going to look gorgeous on here. So yeah, I will have these done. Possibly I can show you in my next video a few of the projects that are done. Or maybe uh, in a couple of photos on Facebook I can show you. But yeah, very easy to do. And just frame your picture by bringing the edges around from the, the sides and the bottom, making sure that you just glue the bottom first to hold it in place, and then do your trimming and cutting afterwards. Uh, as far as the other side, I have a, a blank um, canvas here. So I could just leave this like this for somebody to journal on, or I could take a pencil and just hand draw some nice little lines on here to remind people that yes, they can write on this and then fill it with something wonderful or even just blank pages or a notebook that somebody can use again to, as more writing space. So lots of possibilities with these envelopes. And as much as I want to get the butterfly one done in this video as well, um, I w I'm trying to keep the videos short, so I'll just show you a couple that I have made. This one was one with um, the this red flower and the butterfly, and I made it with coffee stained paper, so again, it's blank on the back. And I put the label on the flap, and that just gives it a little bit of weight so that the it holds the flap down, and um, you, you can write on there something what's inside, or um, secret notes or whatever you want to add to it. And this could be uh, embellished a little further. I was just playing around getting some made so I could show you what they look like made up. And it's the same process. I, I just folded the sides in and up and then added something to break the photo color so it's not so much color all at once. And it also works as a backdrop for any embellishments that you put on top. This one turned out really cute. I'm not a pink person, um, it, but at least um, I have a pink envelope for that pink journal I'm going to be making. Um, so again, I use the book page to uh, as a backdrop for the butterfly, and yet you still see lots of the floral image behind it. And then I used it on another uh, complimentary butterfly as an embellishment and um, just a focal point on the top of the envelope. Back of the envelope is blank, ready, ready to add some lines or some journal paper or whatever it is that you like in, in order to write on it. And these will be floating pockets. However, this one, you know, it's plain. Same with this one is plain. They could all be glued into a book, but I don't know. I like to have them loose so that I can move them around and, and it just feels nice to have pieces that come out of your journal uh, to play with and, and um, 
uh, fill with goodness. So, and these ones I haven't uh, cut the little round flap yet, so I will have to go back and do some some adding on here. As I said, I hadn't embellished these really yet, um, just made them up to show you some some finished samples. So I hope this was an inspiration for you. I hope that you will look for those floral books with the photographs in them. And they could be any kind of book. They could be a book on, um, uh, well, I don't know. It could be a book on anything. <laughs> it could be a book of cars. And, and you could cut out the cars and do the same process and, and, and wrap the, the um, paper around and then and use these in a, in a men's journal or, or a masculine journal. And it could be a book on airplanes that you cut apart. Uh, there could be some sea animals that you find. Uh, it could be animals in, instead of flowers. It could be birds, uh, in which case then you may want to embellish with a few flowers instead of adding uh, more onto the birds. So so the, it's endless. It's just your imagination. So always craft with your eyes wide open, as I tell you. And uh, that's it for my video for today. I'm hoping to have my video for tomorrow, Mass Monday, but I'm not 100%. I'm getting a little backed up here. And we do have the, the construction is actually going to start tomorrow in the basement. So I don't know how much access I will have to this room. And um, on Wednesday and Friday will be my uh, work in progress and my follow-up Friday. But that I can do from upstairs uh, in the rest of my house with what I have on hand. And uh, I will try to make a little bit more progress on at least on today uh, as well as um, during the week so that I can be ready for those two videos. And my Thrifty Thursday can still be done from upstairs in my house. It'll just be a little bit different of a look. Uh, but that's uh, pretty much it for this week. And um, I hope to get more done. And I will uh, post as I go along and let you know the progress of how I have access to my basement or not. And um, we will talk to you soon. Have yourself a very creative day and a creative week, and I look forward to seeing all of you again. Bye for now.